Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Alex Hamilton. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Axel AI here in North America. And I'm joined by my colleague, Patrice Gutebel, who's Vice President of Product Development uh, for Axel AI as well. So today we're gonna show you Connector AI, our workflow automation tool. And uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna pass this over to Patrice and here we go, thanks. Thank you, Alex, uh, and thank you everybody for attending. So my name is Patrice, VP of products at Axor, and when we started Axor at the beginning, we wanted to offer a easy to install and deploy media asset management solution. And we, we believe we succeeded. We, we have by far the easiest to use and deploy MAM, uh, but oftentimes it did not offer what the customer wanted to do once he found the media. So we have a quick and nice interface to search, find, and retrieve the media, but what do you do with it? And this lack of, co of customization or this lack, the, this lack of development, if you will, within the Axel ecosystem caused some issue. Uh, and therefore, we have developed and released two years ago Connector, which is, as Alex pointed out, a uh, uh, rule-based automation aut automation software. So think of it as, say, you know, uh, Aspera, Orchestrator, or Telestream Vantage. So, uh, you know, much more open. Or if you are actually a Mac user, uh, think of it as Automator, but on steroids. Correct. And so I am going now to share my screen and basically show you what Connector is about. Uh, so it's a free standing app. You do not need Axel to run Connector, nor do you need Connector to run Axel. They are both completely independent, but they can talk to each other. And what I am going to do here is not necessarily show you workflows with Axel, but rather I want to show you what uh, sorry connector. And I'm going to bring this little highlighter so we can follow the mouse. So once you launch the app, this is what you're going to, pre to be presented with. Uh, first, you will have here in the middle where you're going to have your diagram. So the rule based automation, any kind of workflow, you draw a diagram on paper to see what, what you're going and if you reach condition A or B, you go and perform this. This is where the magic is going to happen here in the middle. If I were to look underneath, this is where you will have all the log message, including when it cannot find, for example, a, a recent project that I have created. Uh, let me clear this, uh, this uh, uh, log. So, and you can filter down by uh, debugging info, error messages, what is fatal, and so on, and the trace. Uh, that will give me pretty much everything which will, uh, will all uh, help me uh, troubleshooting. And then on the right side, you have kind of the control panel within Connector, such as do I have workflows that have how many workflows? I can add more workflows or duplicate them. I can rename them. As you can see, I can rename these workflows. And so these three workflows, I will be able to run them simultaneously when I decide to run the project. So if I were to click on project at the top here and run the project, three of them, you will see the little clock wheel here moving are going to run at the exact same time. I'm going to start the project now and we're going to delete. This is also where I will be able to create variables. Now variables will be your best friend. It's basically going to allow you to store information that you either generate or receive from one workflow and reuse it somewhere else within the same workflow. The workflow would be again, each individual tab, so each task that you want to do uh, within the project. And you can move it, you can save it as a variable and reuse it at another set of variable. Uh, and I will be able to demonstrate that. This info tab here will allow you to edit the information that you, you have placed in a diagram. 
for example, by right clicking, I will be able to go to the unit and let's say I just want to do a file copy right here. And here you will see that now this info unit has the from to, I can easily edit them. I can also edit them by double clicking here, you know, and path to source. So I can either edit here or I can edit here. As you can see, we are going to ignore the big typo that I've made. So you have two ways that you can edit. The third type will be how do I search for units? So let's say that I wanted to check something such as TP. I can enter keyword and we are going to find different units at the top that are relevant to my search, such as an FTP or put or download. Let's see if I do Vimeo. And here we go, I have a possibility to have a Vimeo upload. Can I see what kind of upload I have? I have Vimeo, I have FTP, that looks like it. I think, I'm pretty sure we have also YouTube. So different ways, that different things I can do. So. I can kind of search and find, and you will see that the list is quite extensive as to what we provide out of the box with a connector. And that being said, it's all Java based and you can create your own, uh, your own set of boxes that you bring over. This time will allow me to rearrange a little bit the units, so bring to the front or back. And last but not least, you have the check of the timing, how long it takes for each different process to go through and how much memory they are using. And speaking of memory, at the bottom right here, you have a memory alloca allocated uh, graph that will tell you if you get to dangerous level. Very useful to troubleshoot everything. So that is kind of the interface within Connector. Uh, let's do something very simple. We are going to first have, I'm going to grow a quick workflow for you guys and something that will show you a little bit how you can get working with Connector. So let me, let me start with this first workflow and I'm going to just call it a path grab. You can put actually a space, uh, it's just force of habit on my side. And here we go. So what I would want to do is simply create a watch folder where I'm going to go through the content. And by right clicking again, I can go through categories and see what I got. And the first thing I do is have a event. What is going to trigger my action? And I'm just going to have a button for this demo sake. Now, in real life, you will have either a scheduler, a trigger, or you will call from another application a, a workflow within connector, say Axon, for example. So for now, I'm just going to have a button, which is then going to find files. So let's see, we have one to watch folder. There is no watch folder, but I have file list here. And I'm going to go through and go to the file list. Now you will see by zooming in that I have triangles and I have circles or what we call ports within our documentation. This triangle will actually allow me to draw the flow, meaning that when I click the button, where do I go? I will go here. And upon failure or success, I can have different tasks. Then on the left side, you will see what we can receive or set. And on the right side will be what is being returned. So let's go about here and I'm going to go now to the info and we're just going to go through documents, uh, maybe desktop here and I will say videos. There we go, I will have a couple of videos here. So let's take this folder. Quick tip, very handy is if I use this tab on the right side here, I can drag and drop and resolve the path automatically. That is uh, pretty helpful. You can choose what kind of ex extensions we want. Do we want to be recursive or not? I do not have any subfolders, so it doesn't really matter. But what I want to do is output the file, so I will checkbox this file. So and we see that we have different colors, and that would be different type. Red, it would be Boolean. True or false, checkbox. Purple would be a string. 
blue will be a array. Array will be a list of value. And because I will have more than one file in a folder, or the possibility to have more than one file in a folder, that will be a, a blue an array. Zooming out. So what do I want to do? Like I said, we are going to have a list of files and I want to perform something with this list of files. We need to actually go through each files individually. Right now I have only done or failure. So when I'm done, so what do I have in between? Let me perform a search. We have what we call an array iterator. This is your best friend here. When, you come, when it comes the time to deal with the array, it is going to take the array that you send it and perform the task individually by this third flow here. You have completed, you have failed, and you have for each element found. And I will be able to do something for each element found. And I'm going to go through that. And the content found, I'm going to pass it. And now you can see that I draw cables around here from left to right. I'm going from this area and I pass it along. So I can set it or I can pass it around to one, one flow to another. So for, for the list of values, I'm going to do something. And let's say it is failing. What can, what can I do upon failure? Well, let's say I want to send an email. I'm not going to set it up, but I can just go here, just below, and say, upon failure, send an email, which is basically what often people will do, and you will see the different color here. Uh, always good to find something to do in case of error, worst case scenario, log it somewhere, or follow it. So going through this folder, I'll put the files. What do I do with the content I find? I simply want to save, I'm going to save the information. I'm wanting to grab the path, right? So this is what I'm going for each element. So I am going to do a print string just for us to see it underneath here. And you will see that I can pass along each element to something. And what do I want to print? I want to print the result, so it will be the file path. There we go, found it. What I am also going to do is, if you remember, I told you earlier that you can pass along variables. So let's actually do a new variable here, going back at the beginning. Plus symbol, I have a new variable. I'm going to give it a name such as file path. Again, you can have the spaces on out. You know, we do not, we are not picky about that. I, I, it's just force of habit that I sometimes start without doing it. Uh, it's set, so now I can set it or get it with G or S, or I can right click and say, let's set the, excuse me, that sometimes the mouse is a little bit, uh, I should be able to right click somewhere. It's a little bit tricky with uh, sometimes. Anyway, so I'm going to set it here. And I'm going to set it along here. So the file path will now also be passed along here. All right. Let's create a new variable, a new workflow, and I'm going to do a copy. And here we go, new workflow, copy, and we are going to do again. Uh, this time, oops, not a new workflow. Sorry. We are going to go grab. In this case. Uh, the tick, trigger tick. Remember I told you, you will not always have the two uh, press a button. In this case, I want to do it automatically, say every half second, just to be on the safe side. Uh, and in reality, I will go and continue from there. I will not make a new workflow, but I'm just showing you how you can pass information from one workflow to the other. Uh, and we are going to do a file copy. Better yet, let's do something else. Let's actually do some checksum at the same time. I just saw a file copy and I see file checksum. Let's bring it over and see what we can do here. So the file checksum will allow me to do based on what I want to perform, uh, what, what format I want to perform, a, a checksum from a file path. Now, let's get the file path that I received earlier. 
and I'm going to go through. And upon copy, I'm going to go there. Now what I'm going to do here, again, because it's going to actually go every half second and send me the same file over and over again, this is something that I would not typically do. Uh, the logic is flawed. I'm just showing you an example as to what we're going to do in case uh, when we're sent information back and forth. So what I'm going to do here is replace the error. Instead of replacing the file, just raise a error so that it does not do anything if the file already exists. And we are going to take this file again from, and we are going to paste it to another location. Uh, let's say I'm going to go create a new, uh, we have a folder output. Let me clear that. And we are going, this is where we're going to set it. Again, very handy. I'm going to go to the info here and I'm going to, you will see that the from is already locked because I'm passing the information. I'm going to just drag and drop that here. You can add prefix, postfix, you choose, you can make a move or not. What I'm going to do is simply check the file as well, do a file check, MD5 checksum, and pass along the results. Now, what I will need to do is do something whether or not it's true or false. So I will need a, an other, uh, a, a other indication, again, for the file checksum that will return true or false here. So I will need to do something from there. What I'm going to do is simply add, again, a print, and we are going simply to show it down here the result and what you can also do is rename each box here here that will allow me to see what I'm talking about and I will say file check result and it will print that as we're done here let me clear this log and I'm going to print direct the uh, the information the file checksum and here we go now I have Two files going. What I'm going to do also is enable stepping. That is great because now I can step each process through the way. It will find nothing. It's probably going to do nothing. It's going to go through each half second and nothing is happening. But what I'm going to do now is trigger this one here and see how it goes to the file list. And I can follow each step of the way. I can check what I have here. You can over over the mouse to see the, the result. Let me actually close this, uh, this pointer here so we can actually see a little bit. I have six values. So let's go through one and I have the path going. Print string, you will see that it actually returned the path that I have. And if I go back here, now I will have a path somewhere. And you will see that I have the from that is being passed along from the variable I have created. I have the two toward the output. And now the file copy, as you can see, and look at the file check result that I have here. The file check, it is true, meaning that it passed the checksum. And then we go through and it will continue each, each side individually. Is it the same file? No, it is not. It's not a file called interview. And it's going to go through, make the copy, uh, and do the file check through. Actually, was it? Oh, it was already the same file over and over again. It probably, did it finish here? Uh, go. So I have to do actually step by step. So we are going to stop, and you will see that print a string. And I'm going to stop the step by step now so we can see the project going. Notice the little parts that I'm showing you when you will see the copy happening and it will say, oh, file check result false. One, one actually was not correct. So you will we will have to do something about that. But anyway, it's probably just because the time that I have uh, probably finished here to go through each files and now the, the, the path has not been updated and so on. Anyway, uh, so uh, again, what I would typically do is actually continue from here instead of having explaining it to where it's not perfect logic. But this is basically how connector would work. And you can actually find examples to do things like, for example, uh, for example, 
you could find how to create editing proxies keeping the same folder structure. This is, this is something that come with the example and it will be a bit more complex now than what you are used to see. But if I go to the very top here, uh, this is how we set the default, the, 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 I will set the settings here where it could be 720p, two megabit per second, but I can change the bitrate, I can change the information uh, and so on. And here we we'll define the in and out point. Every two and a half seconds, I'm going to go recursively through the same through the watch folder and for each file, depending on the height that I have set, that's the settings, that's where we go based on the rule that I have set or the condition, how do I branch out? How do I branch back in? Create, we can use FFmpeg, you can use compressor or FFmbc to render files. You can go through very easily uh, here, I use the path manipulation, such as Peter, to get the file path, the file name, I can get also the extension. But that's what I'm using to recreate the folder structure at the other end. So the point of this workflow is, this workflow, scan a watch folder on a regular interval, transcode the file, and a historic destination and one location, recreating the folder structure, which means that I have a set of high res, a set of editing proxies, and they are exactly the same uh, folder structure. So it's easy for me as a video editor to relink at a later time. And once everything is done, you will see that I all test whether or not the file exists. And if it does not exist, you have actually a, a, a statement. You can also check whether or not the file is still growing. That's something that you can, as is the file entirely written, you can check whether or not the file is still growing uh, with the connector. Then I create the directory and I do my FFmpeg transcode. And notice that I always bring the information here, uh, the, the, the variables. It's, it's to allow me to have a better following because you can get to points where uh, it will be quite hard to uh, follow. Uh, that's when actually it was well done. <laughs> uh, there was, I had one that was actually a mess and I wanted to show you guys why it, I used, but now it looks like I cannot find it. Of course the day I would demo for a real customer is going to pop up right away. But then in, in any case, this is the idea of connector. Uh, and with that, we have about five minutes left and I would love to pause a second and see if we have any questions. Let's see. Do you have a version on uh, Windows? That's a very good question. I did demo on, on, uh, on the Mac here. It is primarily Mac. Uh, but it is it is using Java. Therefore, we have also a, a version that is available within Linux. Uh, so you could you have a Linux version. I would typically recommend personally to have uh, the Mac because it's a little bit more fluid than Linux uh, to draw with. But if you need horsepower for rendering with FFmpeg or FFmpc, uh, then you yeah, I would go with the Linux indeed. So uh, excellent question. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, another question, uh, do, you, do we actually build workflows ourselves as a service? And yes, indeed, it, it is actually a, a very good question. Uh, connector is not as simple as Axel, and we are not expecting uh, the customer to sit through and build their own workflows. So we actually provide uh, this as a service with also some sort of a training that will allow you to then tweak, make tweaks, and, and, and be more independent. So, uh, but. Uh, Yes, uh, excellent questions, thank you. Uh, what will be the pricing structure? Uh, uh, Alex, would you like to actually take that one? Helps to unmute, yes, absolutely. So we've played around with different pricing models, but we've come to the conclusion the best way to price a uh, connector is by the number of workflows that we build and support for you. So the entry level version of connector will support uh, four workflows. The next tier up is six. We go to eight from there, 12, and then finally unlimited. So, and obviously 
it's that's concurrent workflows. In other words, Patrice is showing you several in that first one with each tab being a concurrent workflow. So you could support up to four of those simultaneously running on a single system with the entry level uh, uh, version of Connector AI. But yeah, that's how we, uh, so it's not based on, you can have any number of users pushing or pulling information from the system, but it's the number of things that Connector is actually doing for you that is the basis for price. Uh, thank, thank you, Alex. Uh, a other question. You mentioned that we can create our own. How do we do that? Uh, very good question. I probably should have not stopped sharing my screen. So let's reshare the screen and show you briefly. So uh, like I said, it's all Java based. So let me actually go to Finder and go to the application folder where I will find connector here. And notice the plugins, these are all Java files that you will see. Compressor, uh, FTP upload, FTP download that I showed you earlier, uh, social media for YouTube, uh, Vimeo upload. So all these units, you can actually go and we have a SDK. You can go and read it and that will give you more options just like we have added uh, the possibility to say, for example, use Compressor to, as an engine to render, should Compressor be installed on the same machine? So excellent questions. Thank you for all of that. And, and we do have uh, do documentation, obviously. Um, all right, let's see if we have any other questions here. Uh, no, it does not look like I see any more questions. Uh, you know, we are all relatively uh, approachable. So I see it's uh, right at the 2.30 mark. So I want to be mindful uh, for people's schedule. Uh, we are pretty reachable. Uh, we are still small enough that we can use solely our first name at Axolot AI. So uh, Alex will be reachable at Alex at Axolot AI. It's a little bit confusing. <laughs> we just don't mix the letters here between Alex and Axel. And myself will be Patrice, P A T R I C E at Axolot AI. Uh, so thank you very much. You can learn more about Connector. Uh, oh, there is actually another question that just flew. Uh, do we have trials? Yes, actually, we should have started with that. You absolutely can have a 14 to 30 day trial of Connector so you can play a bit with it. Absolutely. Uh, this is something that uh, you, we can uh, pro help you provide and we can also, uh, what you can do, what I will recommend if you want to actually play along, uh, play around with connector, resharing my screen is I would encourage you to read the doc and then go through the example in order, such as starting with hello world, just here, something very simple, uh, all the way to the more advanced uh, the, the more advanced, uh, such as FFmpeg transcoding and so on, so that you will see a little bit more information. You will see that the size does not only really matter, always matter, but it's actually that uh, your understanding of connector that is actually making it less or more advanced in terms of the example. So great question. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, with that, let me make sure there is no other questions. Uh, I, I do not see any. So thank you again. Alex is reachable at Alex at Axel.ai. I am reachable at Patrice at Axel.ai. And you can learn more about Connector at www.connector.ai. Yeah, we make it slightly complicated. Uh, it's two different products, so two different websites, but the same company, Axel. And with that, everybody, thank you all again for coming. The uh, recording will be made available, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day.